Good evening. I wonder how many of you recognize that signature tune we used there. It comes, in fact, from the days when a regular television program was called Sports Reel. And listening to it reminded me of the connection that name has with the very roots of sports broadcasting in Scotland, which were established in radio by the late Peter Thompson, who saw the BBC through the very transition from purely radio coverage into television. Now, Peter, of course, was associated with some great sporting occasions and some very memorable broadcasts, the most notable of which was the 1947 International at Wembley, where in 90 minutes of football, Peter's ringing voice seemed to suggest to the entranced schoolboy listener that Scotland had gained some new kind of freedom. But television brought new images, and in a fortunate historical sense, BBC Scotland Sport was well established in the television game to enable them to put on record the two greatest football achievements by Scottish club teams. I doubt if anybody, even from the earliest days of broadcasting and radio like Peter Thompson encompassing the entire 60 years, would demur if I said that Celtic's triumph in Lisbon and Rangers' victory in Barcelona overshadows everything else we have to reflect in football. That is precisely what we're going to do tonight in the company of the two men who captained their respective sides, Billy McNeil of Celtic and John Gregg of Rangers. Welcome, gentlemen. Looking at you, you in 1967, John, you in 72, walking onto the part that it seemed all that long ago, Billy. Well, it does seem a long time ago, actually, but, you know, looking at the two pictures, uh, I'm a wee bit more fortunate than John, as I haven't changed an awful lot since then. <laughs> well, I remember in, in 72, you actually did have a beard, didn't you? Yeah, I had a beard, uh, an accident in the middle of the cup, actually, but uh, just talking about the, the beards and the haircuts, you see the difference in styles between 67 and 72? <laughs> Did it mean all that much to you, the hairstyles? <laughs> well, for some of us, it's got hair, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Billy, but looking back on it again, I mean, is it a fresh image? I mean, you know, you, your supporters say to you, you know, what was 67 like? You, you yeah. talk about it so much, but is it fresh to look back on it? Well, it is, actually, because we've recently had the, the video, the, the Celtic story published, and I, I tend to look at it quite a lot nowadays, and the kids, the kids enjoy it, so it is fresh, my memory. But, and and um, you, John? I've never seen this uh, film before. Well, the first time? It's the first time I've ever seen the film. Uh, well, I'd don't be falling off your to <laughs> Don't be falling off your stool at some of the tackles, Greg. Well, I only hope the result stays the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, if uh, you, you look back on a game like that, it's all about exultation and, and triumph, but there must mm -hmm. have been harrowing moments. There must have been a bit of pain involved. I think there was a lot of pain, actually, because um, here we were out in the, the final Lisbon and really looking forward to the whole occasion. And, all of a sudden, early in the game, Inter Milan have got a penalty kick. Mm. We felt at the time most aggrieved about it, and really we kept that grievance was with us right up till half time, in actual fact. We'll see that in a second, but before mm. the game, did you feel a sort of pent up energy? You wanted to, to release it all when the game came? No, I, I seem to remember it as a very relaxed Celtic party, in actual fact, because here we were in the final that uh, we really were just there to savour the occasion. I don't think anyone really anticipated a Scottish team. Uh, winning a European Cup, so for us it was easy and it was a great occasion. And that was a marvellous sight, coming out of yeah. the tunnel there. I remember you walked from well behind the stadium, well behind didn't you? Yes, we did indeed. I think the most satisfactory thing about it, we'd heard all the stories about the, the cavalcades of cars and carrying supporters and travelling in so many different ways and all of a sudden here we were and we suddenly realised that they were there to support us and you know, how could we possibly let them down? And it was very cut. Black and, and, and blue, whereas we had but, the green what, and white. Which by the way, out. sorry for the interrupt, what was Jimmy Johnson yeah. doing there with his shirt? Well, I think Jimmy was making arrangements to, to trade a shirt. By the time they ended the game, they were all wanting to trade his shirt. There's a kick-off. Let's watch a game now. Fortunately, they say the temperature has dropped. It was Corso. Murdoch. Johnson. It looks as if Inter have put Burnett to shadow Johnson everywhere. Oh.
Porto. Cavallini. That's all. It's... Well, got away with that one. Five minutes gone. No score. And Johnston, what a great play by Sati, a great effort by Johnston. Corner to Celtic. All. Away from Inter. Quickly, Matsola. Good ball to Capolini. A penalty. He's given it. It's a penalty. It's a penalty. And a terrible thing to happen to Celtic. But they've given away a penalty after only seven minutes. They don't like it, but it's a penalty kick. So, a great chance for Inter to go into the lead, and when Inter get into the lead, they're a pretty tough team to beat. It looks as if Matsola is going to take the kick. And listen to the Celtic fans and the Portuguese fans. It's 1-0 for Inter. This attacking football is quite outstanding, but one hopes that Celtic are not going to leave Lin Lisbon with the Portuguese neutrals having a, an impression of a brilliantly attacking Celtic team, but without the European Cup, who still to put the ball in the net. This is what Inter have done in a sneaking fashion, as a glass of mine, I must say that. Oh, great shot, a wonderful save! Oh, a great shot by number three, Demo. And an equally great save. Well, that's how Celtic might be able to snatch a goal out of this ultra-defensive play of Inter. Oh, and now Simpson's got to come right out of his penalty area. Well, how about that for confidence? Well, how about that, brother? Was your heart not in your mouth when that Well, happened? ours was, but, uh, you know, knowing Ronnie, he was always better with his feet than he was with his hands <laughs> anyway, I think, but uh, it was a nerve biting moment. Oh, well, he might have a bit of fun again from this free kick. Oh, it's a good one, it's equal! Oh! And a field for a penalty, he's given it! So it's an indirect free kick, I think. It's indirect free kick. For dangerous play, it is not a penalty. And Inter have now got 11 men between the ball and the goal, but they've got to get back. You can see where they've got to get back to. Wallace and Chalmers there. And... Gemmel, it's a goal! 
It's a goal! No, he's not giving it. He's not giving it. Oh, well. Well, it just won't go for Celtic, will it? Inter just falling back all the time. Celtic coming forward. Inter Milan packing their goals. Remarkable that they sit back and be satisfied with a one-goal lead. Well, wonder what will happen if Celtic do manage to get a goal. Will Inter Milan be able to raise their game after that? Demo. Cross to Craig. Murdoch. Well, you, you get the fittest of split second chances against a defense like Inter's. A clock to Murdoch. In comes Craig. Kimberly scored a great goal. He's done it. A great goal. 17 minutes of the second half gone. And that could be the goal that wins it for Celtic because Inter now have to come out. Well, Tommy Gemmell has done this time and time again for Celtic, but it looks as if they've been right up against a packed defense, a concrete ball, and he's come through as he did against Stone and scored an outstanding goal. So it could be Celtic having got that slip. Supremely fit side. The 12 becomes now the first British team to win the European Cup. One goal lead. Clark takes the free kick for Celtic. Craig, the man away the pass. The got through. Now to Murdoch. Then it's cutting in from the right. And from behind the goal to our right seat. The stand erupted as every Celtic supporter left to his feet to try and cheer the second goal.
head off. Oh, what a save by Sadi. claiming to Wallace and his legs pull from under him. So with 11 minutes to go and it's still wanting. Celtic really on top now. And that's how the only way Berkeley knows now how to stop John. All to take this indirect free kick. It's, oh, what a save by Sarti. From Murdoch. One goal each, and for those who are worried what will happen if it's one each at the end of 90 minutes, well, there will be extra time and we should be staying here in Lisbon. But the way Celtic are playing, there's going to be no extra time. Five minutes left now. One goal each. Gemmel. Murdoch. It's all! Celtic has scored! I think Jarvis put it in, but it doesn't matter. Only five minutes to go, and without a doubt, the European Cup is on its way to Glasgow. Stevie Jarvis put it in. And Celtic. Our Coco hoops now. Five minutes to go, and they have taken the lead. The referee looked at his two linesmen. The whistle will go any moment now. The referee just looking at his watch. He's not even watching the play. And the whistle is going. And way to our right, the banners, the flags, the scarves, everything going up in the air. This has not just been a victory. This has been an annihilation into the land by a superb Celtic team. And at long last, attacking football has triumphed over the deadly disease of defensive football. And glory is hovering over Parkhead. Billy, it's a wonder you had the energy to lift that cup up, because you had to struggle through the crowd, as I recall. Yes, I did have to struggle through the crowd, actually, and uh, I'd like to be doing it again tomorrow, to be quite sure, fine with you, but sure. uh, a great occasion. Did Just you enjoy it. watching it again? Oh, I, oh, I never... Never tired of watching it. Did the triumph sink in? Did you absorb it all, or was it later on that it hit you? I think it was probably when we came back home to Glasgow that it really sank in, because the excitement the game was with us over there, and it probably wasn't really until we got back home to Glasgow and saw the reception that we got on the way back to Celtic Park. Mm. Now, I, I remember during the game, what was the major characteristic of it was how Celtic kept playing away. I, I always remember Jock Steen saying, Steen saying, I always felt the goal would come. Did you mm -hmm. feel that way as well? Well, I thought, I think during the game, that possibly looking back, the best thing that ever happened was them scoring a goal early on, and particularly from a, a penalty kick at the time, we felt a bit aggrieved about. Mm. So from then on, it was only one thing we had to do, was to go and try and chase something. And I think we played the game and we attacked the game with an appetite that suggested that we'd always score, we'd always get the victory. It was as though fate was on our side that day. Mm. Did you think it was a penalty, by the way? Um, at the time, I think we argued about it, but having seen it so often, actually, yeah, I think the, the referee was right. I'm getting that, yeah. It was. Uh, we felt we should have had one in the second half when Safty pulled uh, Wally Wallace, he'd like. But uh, there you are. Balances out. Balances out. You went through yeah. the crowd with a cup, which yeah. is most important. John, that particular day, it must have sunk into Rangers as Celtic's greatest rivals. Just how important it was for your club to win a European trophy, surely? Well, we played the next week uh, in Nuremberg, actually. Unfortunately, we got to the final of the Cup that year against a German side, and the final happened to be played in Nuremberg. Uh, it was like a home tie for Bayern Munich. Uh, it was a great disappointment to us because uh, I think it would have still been a record now 
Uh, the two clubs from the one two city. Two clubs from the yeah. one city winning the two major trophies. Mm -hmm. Well, when you eventually got to 1972, that must have been an added incentive, not just winning the European trophy, but trying to emulate Celtic. Well, I don't think emulating Celtic was the thing on our mind at the time. I personally felt it was the third time Rangers had been in a European final. Hoping that uh, third time lucky. And mm -hmm. I felt for the club's sake and the supporters, uh, the time is about right for us to win a trophy. And did you Europe. feel it was coming? It was on the stadium that night. Well, I've never seen this film before, actually. No, actually so I'll be that, very yeah. uh, anxious to see it. And mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember a lot about the start of the start, uh, coming up the tunnel or anything. What, but what, well, what, were you very nervous? I was nervous. I, I was emotionally uh, gone at the time because coming to the game, seeing so many range supporters and desperately, desperately want to us to win it, to win. And uh, well, did that make things worse, actually? Well, I think, I think uh, basically we felt that we had to win this thing. No, and I suppose it's inspiration you get from supporters like that. Well, to get that kind of support in a match away from home, it's tremendous. This is the Rangers team, and I, I suppose at that stage the big surprise was Colin Jackson off playing. Colin Jackson uh, called off the day before. Well, John, we can look at this game now. Memorable night for Rangers. Very powerful looking team and off we go. There's Sabo, Joseph Sabo goes down heavily. John Gregg behind him, Willie Johnston and the whistle goes, it's a free kick. And John Gregg no doubt be looking after Zabo tonight. That's number two Basilov. To take this free kick. There's Ellie McDonald in very quickly to Willie Johnston. Johnston slow moving forward there. Dave Smith at the back. Russians retreating. Colin Steen. And Johnson can't keep that in. The game starting rather slowly. Dolmasov was up there. Tommy McLean. And a great shot and save. Certainly much more like it from Rangers. Here it comes again. Tommy McLean just getting in there. And the goalkeeper. Almost shot unaware. Johnston just missing that. Willie Matheson. Johnston. John Gregg. Gregg. Good tackle by Gregg. Colin Steen. Steen going in and impeded by the referee. And nevertheless, Rangers picking up the pace of the game now. This is what we want to see from them. I think they've let the Russians play around in a kind of academic way far too long. And I'm McLean to take this. Good one to that far side. It's touched away there by Zikov. Evrajin. Jard and Den. No whistle. Dave Smith has it. Towards Colin Steen. Here's Steen, it's a goal! It's a goal by Steen, what a goal! What a goal by Steen! And on come the fans! Oh, they'll have to get off! Here it comes! What a goal by Steen, he followed that up! And whoop, in it goes! The way comes Dolbonasov. Beautiful play by the centre half. Zhukov. Dave Smith considering a corner and the Russians were really attacking that time. You can see how the Rangers defense was practically cut out in the middle here. Open goal and Smith slightly hesitating. Cleared well by Sandy Jardin, McDonald, Tommy McLean. Bring that down neatly. There goes McLean. Under Colin Steen, brought down, free kick, and he's right over beside the range of supporters who would look hostile at the Russians as they even sneezed at Steen. McLean with it, the neat ball to Derek Johnson. Steen. Alpicon. 
John Gregg. Here's Dave Smith. Smith going up. It's a good ball to go. It's a goal by Willie Johnston. It's a goal by Johnston, and this time the Rangers supporters aren't coming on, thankfully. But there it is. Watch it. Number two this time. The Russian defense cut out in the middle. Willie Johnston's up there. A neat flick, and the goalkeeper completely deceived. Rangers 2-0 up. 39 minutes gone. <laughs> Greg. John Gregg again to Steen. Steen going in. Back to Derek Johnson, to Tommy McLean. McLean with it now. There's a neat one, and Steen's almost up to that. A corner, though. Tommy McLean with it. The Rangers emblem at the back. Craig Johnson trying to get up. Looks away towards Dabo. Dabo there downfield. There's Sandy Jarden. This is a very dangerous looking Djokovic breaking and Peter McCloy. Outside light of region, nowhere near it. We're in extra time in this hand. Dave Smith. McLean beautifully to Derek Johnston. To Johnston and just well. well. John, in that uh, particular game, Derek Johnston showed his versatility because he came in almost his third choice there, didn't he? Well, he was only a boy at the time. Most people looked upon him as a centre forward. He was actually the third choice centre half that year because of the injury to Ronnie McKinnon in Portugal and Colin Jackson. Go to Rangers. Back he goes to Dave Smith. On to Jordan. To Khan. Rangers will be quite content to keep possession of the ball in the second half. As long as that score remains. Steen and here's Willie Johnston with a chance. And it's a goal. It's a goal by Johnston. Right out of the blue. Rangers three up. Incredibly, three up, the start of the second half. Here it comes though, watch how the Russian defence was absolutely cut out. Down towards Johnston and he comes in at the back. They look towards the linesman. They picked his spot, looked as if he might have hit it too late, but no, the goalkeeper slow going down. And there we are, Rangers 3 nothing up. Three and a quarter minutes in to be precise. By our watch, that is. And Sabo kicking off, and Moscow Dynamo have a real fight on their hands now. Now, Willie Johnson. And we've seen something of the best of Johnson tonight. Rangers have waited all season for it. And he's got the legs of that man and being obstructed. No, the referee waving play on. Songs rising up from all around the Barcelona Stadium. 99% of it populated by Rangers supporters, or 99% of the people here, Rangers supporters. Here's Matheson, and that's a bad one. The great chance for the Russians. And that's a goal, number 13 has scored. Estrakov, the substitute. And a bad mistake by Matheson. And no wonder John Gregg's having a word with them. Watch this now. Rangers playing it too cocky. Jardin and the Russians reduce the leeway. And 13 taking up good position and it's 3-1. Russians maneuvering around. They like these set positions. Khan to Greg. Just cut off there by Vasilov. Neat ball, there's Willie Matheson, and McCloy, a great save. And for Sabo coming up, now Alec McDonald. And Willie Johnson just offside, and Rangers playing only two men or three men up front, content to hold off as we see this again. 
No, we don't. We're back to play. We're back with the play. Vasilov to Domitov. And a bad pass at the end. Russians playing up well, though. Just Colin Steen. Steen with it. He needs some support. He has nobody. Still Steen. To McLean. Oh, it's just over. Great play by Colin Steen. And there was nobody with them. Tommy McLean came up at the last, as you'll see. He was looking for somebody, and there it is. McLean doing well to take that first time. Well, as I was saying, Rangers have been in European football since 1956. A bit nothing to show for it. Now 3-1 up. Here's Tommy McLean trying to cover up there, and it's a corner kick. And the Rangers defenders were allowing that player to go through, and it just as well as McLean went with them. That is number seven, Baraccini. Nine minutes left. Nine minutes left. That's a good ball. And a great save. And it's away. No, it's a, just a word. I thought it was in. We'll get the action replay now. Rangers living dangerously there. Look in. Nobody there for it. And it's just taken away. There's Sabo. Out to Zhikov. No, it's Dolmatov. And easily mopped up by Dave Smith. Now, Dave Smith for Rangers. There's a beautiful ball to Steen. And a great save by the keeper. Steen could have clinched it then. Steen again. Tremendous guts he has, slipping there though. Now Alec McDonald. Willie Johnston. Still Willie Johnston. And Wild with a shot. Four minutes to go. Four minutes left. Willie Johnston looking tired. Indeed, the whole Rangers team after a hectic and barren season for them, looking tired. The Rangers supporters sensing now victory with four minutes to go. The Rangers supporters beginning to converge near the edge of the touchline. But here's a chance for the Russians. Sandy Jardin, then it was almost an own goal. Great save by McCloy. Look at this one. Here it goes again. Jardin taking the ball with his wrong foot, you see. Should have taken it with his left and McCloy right on the spot. There's Alec McDonald. Now number 10, Mahoyakov. And it's a goal. It's a great goal. By Dynamo, I think it was by the Kini, I'm not sure. Here it is again, the Rangers defense sleeping there. That was number 10, Mahoyakov, who scored. Dynamo 2, Rangers 3. A nerve-wracking situation for Rangers now. Could they let this slip? Victory was almost there. Russians. And then it is. The final whistle's gone. Rangers have won the European Cup Winners' Cup. And onto the field go thousands and more thousands. Rangers have won, and I've never seen anything like it. The players, the players will be suffocating in there. There we are. Look at them, and Rangers players somewhere are in the middle of all that. A tremendous victory for them, the first time in many, many years of fighting. They've got a European trophy, the European Cup Winners' Cup. Well, John, how's that for your first viewing? Oh, thrilled. Uh, really excited about watching it again now. I can't remember half of that game. It's... Uh... It seems such a long time ago. Good to relive it, though.
Oh, marvellous. Mm. How did you get out of that crowd at the end? You didn't actually have the cup, did you? No, that was the one anticlimax uh, of the whole game. I felt uh, I, was, I was presented the cup in a small room, uh, which to me, after all the work that had been put into it and uh, playing the teams we had played, to, give, to be given the cup in a small room, to me, was a, a big anticlimax to it. Now, it, it does occur to me again that you were quite fortunate to play in that game. I'd suffered uh, about two months previous, uh, six weeks previous, with a, an ankle injury, a stress fracture in the outside of my right foot. Uh, I had a problem right up to the day of the match. In fact, the morning of the match, I wasn't confident about playing the game at all because... Uh, so you could tell supporters now that they, you, they might well have played that game without you? Well, uh, the manager, Willie Waddle, after the game told me he had no intentions of uh, leaving me out. Uh, but he kidded me on that I had to prove to the press and to the public that I was fit to play in the match. Mm. And the Monday and Tuesday prior to the game, uh, I had to train with the rest of the lads. And the Wednesday morning when I, when I got up at my bed, I had this uh, problem. Now, it, again, when you look back on it, Rangers 3 nothing up. Did you think the cup virtually was won? I thought the game was over at 3 nothing because I didn't feel that any team that particular year could give this, the side we had three goals of a start and beat us. And you almost blew it, though. We almost blew it because uh, we got a bit tired. Probably I was more tired than anybody because I had hardly trained at all before the game. And we, I felt, I felt uh, when the second goal went in, I was glad that there was only about three or four minutes to go. Billy, in general, what did these triumphs mean to Scottish football? Well, I think for us as, as players, actually, they, they really fulfilled ambitions. That uh, Our ambitions in those days, I don't speak for myself, I speak for a whole lot of players, were to go and enjoy ourselves playing football and to give value. Um, I think nowadays there are too many side issues at, uh, th th mm. th at stake now and really for us the only important thing was to go and play in games and go and enjoy games and really f from homebred teams it was a magnificent uh, time for Scottish football. Did it add to our prestige John? Well I, I felt it did. Uh, Rangers and Celtic have always been world known for the, the names in the game uh, but we had to win something like this to, to establish ourselves. Uh, it was OK being known throughout Europe, but we had to actually win the tournament to, it, to be established. I think time actually lends to your achievement, because one begins to wonder, could it possibly happen again? Billy, briefly. Well, I think it can always happen, Archie, but uh, it'd be difficult to see teams having the strength of pull that those two had then. John? Well, you just need to look at this uh, next couple of weeks. We have two sides in the quarter-final. Right. Uh, it doesn't mean to say Rangers and Celtic have to win it. Dunbardine and Dundee United could win, but I'm, I'm hopeful. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Well, we hope we've rekindled some very pleasant memories for you. I know that football and nostalgia go well hand in hand. From John, Billy and myself, good night. <laughs>